Hi everyone, I'm Theo. And I'm Marshall. And this is Twin Cinema. And welcome once again to Marshall Monday. Now, we do have an apology to make. Unfortunately, I was sick while we would normally be filming this, so we did have to postpone this video uh, for a week, so we definitely do apologize for being late. Alright, and for those of you who are not familiar with how we do this, Basically, we pick a theme, and in a two-week cycle, we release three videos. The first video is an introduction to the theme. The second video is where we review the movie that Marshall chose based on the theme. And the third video is where we review the movie that I chose for the theme. Yep. Uh, so the theme for this cycle is African cinema. Uh, particularly, we're going to be looking into cultural identity in African cinema. And uh, you can watch the introduction video here. And uh, the film that we're going to be reviewing today is the one that I picked out. It is Yilin. It is uh, directed by Soleimani Sise. It's from Mali. And the film is Bambara, which is a uh, tribe in Mali, the major tribe in Mali. It's the Bambara language. It's uh, brightness is what it means. All right. And why did you pick this movie? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I, I watched a review on it, um, and I've read a couple of reviews on it. I've read about the film. And it just looked... Really fascinating. Um, it looked beautifully shot. I'm really interested in in myth and legend and culture, and that's what this film is about. It's about it's about magic. It's about culture. It's about identity. And so I just thought, you know, when we were going to be talking about African cinema, this this is the film that I wanted to do. So all right, sounds good. We're going to do a quick synopsis of the film. Be warned, there are spoilers, and then we'll come back and review. Set in the indeterminate past of Mali, Yilin is the coming-of-age story of the young Bambara man, Nyankuro, who is on the run from his evil father, Soma, who is a powerful magician who wants Nyankuro dead to prevent a prophecy from coming true. Hoping to defeat his father, Nyankuro goes to the land of the Dogon to seek aid from his uncle, Soma's twin, Jugi. Along the way, he helps a neighboring Fulani tribe defeat their enemies and gains a wife, Atu. Upon meeting his uncle, Nyankuro is given the Korei Wing a magical artifact whose brightness has left Yugi blind. When Nyankuro and Soma finally meet, Nyankuro uses the wing to defeat his father. The film ends with Nyankuro and Atu's son walking across the Sahara, carrying the Kori wing on his back. All right, so, as you may guess from that synopsis, magic is a heavy theme in this film. The very opening shots of this film are of magic ritual, and before even the actual shots of the film start, we get an explanation of the Como worldview, complete with magic symbols and a brief overview of the entire belief system. Uh, this gives the film a, a mystical, mythopoetic quality. This kind of takes place in an undeterminate past, even though it is said to be in the 13th century. And the beginning gives enough information about the magic system that you're not totally confused, but it also doesn't over-explain it. It lets you, it lets you discover this culture naturally. Agreed. And, and you know, it's interesting to me, because when I think about how magic was used in pre-modern society, magic sort of function, magic and spirituality, kind of a combination of both, really, uh, they functioned as this sort of like omnibus for understand, like that pre-modern people used to understand the world. You know, you think of magic as a way to understand natural phenomena, the natural world. And also magic, especially in, you know, this sort of society, magic also functions as a way to understanding relationships with people and power mm -hmm. and government. Yeah. And magic is in many ways a reflection of the culture and its values. In right now, when we have literature, films, uh, media basically that talks about magic it's almost always about an innate gift you know something you're born with and maybe you have to study go to school about it but it's something that you already have and no one maybe no one not no one else but very few other people have and if you don't aren't born with it you can't use it well in Bambara culture at least according to this film this magic is it's a skill set uh, these people are craftsmen they they build things they make the Kore wing, the pylon. Uh, Nyankuro defeats his enemies using animal bone. He creates a fetish made out of animal bone and performs a ritual with it. Uh, there's ritualistic bathing. Um, these are skills, these are rituals, these are things that anybody can learn. But the reason why the ma vast majority of people don't have this power isn't their inability to have this power. It's the fact that the knowledge of the Como is kept secret by the society 
by the elites of the society. And that's what really drives the conflict of this film. When you look at the father, Soma, his uh, drive is partly because this is prophecy that his son is going to kill him, but the reason he tells other people that he's attacking his son is because um, he says that his son is going to, has stolen this knowledge, has removed the knowledge from where it should rightly be in his family's power, and he's going to basically expose it to the wider, pop, wider populace. And that's what happens to um, Soma's twin brothers, Soma's twin brother, Jugui. Mm -hmm. He's expelled and blinded because he wants to bring the Como to the people at large. That's correct. Um, there's a sense of, it made me think of the myths of like Prometheus, Pandora, uh, Eve, where people who want to bring knowledge to society at large are punished. However, in those myths, they may not be seen as necessarily villains, but Prometheus, Pandora, Eve, they have a fatal flaw, pride, curiosity, um, disregard for authority. They're punished by the cosmos for their desire for knowledge. While in uh, this film, there's punishment from the elite, from the people in charge, but in the end, they're vindicated by the cosmos when uh, Soma is defeated by Neonkaro. True, Neonkaro dies, but he knows from the beginning that his death is going to be glorious, it's going to mean something, and it isn't a death in vain. Um, he brings this light to the people. He brings this brightness to the people. And, you know, it's interesting that you bring up the comparison to Prometheus and those other Greek myths, because I want to talk a little bit about how I feel this story functions as myth, as folklore, and specifically what I was thinking about as I watched the movie Joseph Campbell and his ideas. So, obviously, when you watch this movie, it's very much rooted and soaked and immersed in traditionalist Mali culture, mm -hmm. right? The folklore the belief system that can be kind of alienating for people who aren't really initiated into that belief system. And in fact, that was Cisse's purpose or one of his purposes. And I quote, Yelin invites the spectator to go deeper in imagining the significance of the Como beyond the literal meaning of the song beyond the film. One looks for the codic meaning of the song, which is most important because it contains the secrets of the universe. My film positions the spectator in the midst of these secrets and keeps him or her busy looking, interpreting, exploring. It is this level of the film that is incredibly exciting for the Malian spectator. For the spectator who is not initiated, I mean the American, French, or British, I am sure that the film is perceived literally. I mean that this spectator hears the ritualistic song, reads its translation, but this direct translation is not what is expressed in the film. The sentences are codified and refer to other objects which obey the rules of the, the specific knowledge. The rules of this knowledge can only be decoded by initiates of the coma. And so it's pretty obvious that he wanted this to mean something in particular to the Malian people. And well, that's the case, but I still feel like the story is very accessible to those people who are outside of that cultural paradigm because... I really feel like the story does fit into Joseph Campbell's idea of the monomyth, that is, the story of a hero who leaves the realm of the ordinary into the realm of the magical and brings a boon back to his people. And like you, I really like do a parallel to Greek mythology because sort of in the American context, Greek mythology is sort of like the mythology we take, uh, and even though it's not specifically American. Um, I thought of the edible story. Uh, you have similar, very similar things. You have the conflict between a mother and a son. You have a prophecy that the son will defeat the father. You have a mother who takes the son away to protect him from the father, but eventually, you know, the conflict cannot be avoided. Fate cannot be avoided. You have a 
blind prophet. So there's a lot of, you know, really recognizable elements. And so while the specifics are very, you know, unique to Malian culture, it still has a base level that you can understand as sort of myth as a function of language and as a language in and of itself in terms of its structures. Oh, completely. Um, yeah, there are symbol, mythological symbols that don't make a whole lot of sense. Like, you know, they talk about seeing a hyena in the daylight as an omen, and you see later on, Anyankaro sees a hyena in a tree. And then near the end of the film, you see uh, Soma become an elephant and Anyankaro become a lion. Um, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, um, but those are just specifics. For the most part, even the other rituals make sense. Like, there's a lot of bathing ritual, which is an almost universal act of purification and prayer. Milk comes up a lot, which is nourishment, life. You know, the mother sacrifices milk when she bathes herself to pray for Nyankro's health and his well-being, literally sacrificing the liquid of health in order to give it to her son. And then in the, you know, adjacent scene, the people who have captured Nyankro are drinking milk, but aren't giving it into Nyankro, like basically denying him life while his mother, and basically it seems like his mother is providing for him as this maternal figure, even like through time and space. Mm -hmm. Interesting, especially because she's a mother. Milk, milk mother's yeah. milk, very. Um, I also, like, when you think about legend and folklore, it's, it's a way, legend and it's, a historicity. It's something that's timeless, something beyond time, beyond history. It becomes a way to look at our like a cultural heritage, but it also becomes a way to look at the present and also a way of like determining the future. And I feel like that's something that Cisse was really intending to do with this movie. Mm. Everything is cyclical. And that's sort of when this film takes place, it's at the end of a cycle, and then there's the beginning of the cycle. It's the end of this you know, this group of people who have this power, they've abused this power. It's time for their cycle of power to end and for a new cycle of unify, unification and a more democratic idea, you know, mm -hmm. to begin when Neon Crow defeats Soma. Mm -hmm. And I feel, and Cisse, I think, did say this, that this is him making a commentary about Mali at the time. Mali at the time was under a military dictatorship. Mm -hmm. And so it's a small group of people controlling too much power, denying the people freedom, you know, and basically like Soma has his, lives his desires unchecked and he can go through and basically tells people, I'm going to come in and take what I want in my quest, you know, in my selfish quest for vengeance. Uh, I think that can be definitely analogous to a military dictatorship. Uh, completely. And there's also a big sense of unification. Um, this film takes place in the tribe. There's three settings um, for three different tribes. The major tribes, not the only tribes, but the biggest tribes in Mali. Uh, there's the Bambara. There's the Fulani or Pul. And there's also the Dogon. Um, so the son of Nyankaro, who is Bambara, and his wife, Atu, who is Fulani. Um, he carries on the tradition. He's living in the uh, land of the Dogon. Uh, he's carrying on the tradition of the Kore wing, of the Como. He's unifying the people. There's a, there's a symbolism of him being uni of unifying the people. So it seems like this is a, a promise to the Malian people that, yes, right now they are, they are poor, they're one of the poorest nations in the world, but things will improve if they, if they have leaders that care about the people and if they're unified. Because he did talk a lot about being a unified people, putting aside differences of the past and working towards a better future. And I think that's really exemplified, too, in Jagui's prophecy that he gives to Nyankro. Um, he talks about a lot of the things that happened in the past. Mm -hmm. So 
So in that you know little clip, he talks about slavery. We think of the West African slave trade. Mm-hmm. He talks about people losing their i you know their own tribal identity and religion, and that can be seen both like in the slave trade when slaves were indoctrinated in Christianity, and likewise people in Mali. Mali is now an Islamic country and is no longer that tribal belief system. And you know I feel Cisse is sort of is you know mourning these losses, mourning these things that have happened. You know, in the film, it's supposed to be prophecy, but in the contemporary day, it's also like looking back in the history of the country. And But at the same time, he says, an upheaval hope. And in that cyclical nature, I feel like Cissé is saying, okay, we have to like make a cyclical return to our roots and be our own people, be a unified people to get back to where we once were. Because, you know, in the Malian Empire... You know, Mali used to be one of the most important empires in the world. It was a center for commerce. It was a center for trade. It was a center for learning. Timbuktu was in Mali. And the richest man in the world at one time was from Mali. And it's almost like Cissé is saying, okay, we have to, like, make the cyclical journey. We have to get over and start anew and become a unified people. And we can get to where we were. And we we can become the envy of the world again. So, like, that prophecy is really, like, both a historical retelling, like a, a retelling of history... But also, again, a prophecy for the modern world. Oh, yeah, and it's and it's a universal message as well. I mean, it's very you know obviously it's very Malian, Malian based, but any ling- any culture can see the wisdom of unification and the rejection of leaders who don't care about the people. So uh, it's very Malian, but it's also very universal. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've talked about a little bit. What did you, what are your overall thoughts in the film? Um, well, uh, the film, I think it's. Both a good film, but it's also a very important film. Visually, it's just stunning. It's one of the most beautiful films I've ever seen. Um, the music is phenomenal. It's this mix of French jazz and African uh, tribal music. Um, the story is universal, but very interesting. The acting's great. The only the only complaint I would have, not even so much a complaint, but just a caveat, is it is a slow film, um, and it is not a film for everybody. I agree. I really love this movie. I thought it was great. I thought the acting was great. I thought the cinematography was amazing. And I learned a lot. You know, I didn't really have that much knowledge about Mali other than a very base knowledge. I knew that Timbuktu was there. um, And that at one time was a very important empire in Africa and the world. And that's kind of the extent of my knowledge. And, you know, this to me, I learned a lot about the culture. I didn't like realize how multifaceted it is. You have these three different tribes and there's this diverse landscape and it's beautifully shot, beautifully done. And it's just a great movie. Mm -hmm. I loved it. So yeah, you don't mind a slower movie. I think you should definitely, definitely pick out this film. All right. Well, that's it for our review of Yelin. We will see you guys on Thursday when we review the movie I ends by Mimbeti. And please remember to subscribe to our videos, rate, share our videos on social media, and like us on Facebook. Bye.